you know the Bible says he repented God that he made man in the days of Noah. His creation that he made in his image, it repented him that he made man. It repented God that he made you wicked people. Yet, in his mercy, he sent his son Jesus Christ to die the death that you and I deserve because of the rebellion, because of the sin, because of the drunkenness, the idolatry, the death that you and I deserve after we've rejected him time and time and time again. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die the death of a sinner. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I shouldn't quit serving him till I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I was alone and idle. I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven saying there is work to do. I took the master's hand and I joined the heavenly band. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I shouldn't quit serving him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I left my friends and kindred bound for the promised land. The grace of God upon me, the Bible in my hand. And in the highways I trod, crying, sinners come to God. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. For my Lord. And I promised him that I shouldn't quit serving him. The Bible says that as it was the days of Noah, when men and women were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, up until the day that Noah entered into the ark, they were wicked, rebellious. Yet up until the time that God brought his judgment, they just continued on living their lives, continued on eating and drinking, continued on marrying and giving in marriage. And the Bible says that's how it's going to be, and that's how it is right now. There's a judgment coming from God upon this earth. Now, I don't know what it's going to be. It could be, it could be like on its way right now, seconds from now. But you're eating, you're drinking, you're giving a marriage, you're just continuing on with your life. When God promises, God made a promise. You all know what the promises of God? God made a promise to judge the world in righteousness. Righteousness, people. He's going to judge the world in righteousness. The Bible says that righteousness is God's standard. It's His bloodline. It's what everything is, is, is judged off of. It's right living before God. And the problem with that, with that Comic-Con is it's all about fantasy. Because you can't stand the reality of life. You can't stand reality. You can't stand normalness that God has called you to. You can't, you can't stand the normalness that God has called you to. So you need to come out here and fantasize about something else. And I'll tell you what. Some of these movies you watch where fire is getting to fire and fireballs and judge, what you see is just coming. That is what's coming upon you people. When God rains down fire, it's going to look like just like these video games you guys play. It's going to look like just like the movies you're watching. Only it's going to be real and it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late at that time for you. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. To choose this day whom you will serve. Jesus Christ gave his life. He lived a perfect life, the Bible says. Because he knew the sacrifice for your sin he needed to be perfect. And you, your people are so far, you're so interested in dressing in a way that attracts the attention of men. When the Savior of the universe desires fellowship with you. God wants to fellowship with you. Jesus Christ wants a relationship with you. 
Yet you dress in a way to attract the attention of a few perverted men just so you can have some attention when God desires to fellowship with you. When Jesus Christ desires to have a relationship with you. When the creator of everything you see, the one that gives you breath in your lungs and, and causes your heart to beat. You know the Bible says if God, if God should, should uh, to change his mind and set his heart, he can call back to himself and spirit and breath and all flesh and prayer. God is the reason that your that your heart beats. You can reject him, you can deny him, you can hate him, but he's the one that gives you life. He's the one that causes your lungs to function properly. And what if he pulls that out of back? What if he takes that back? What if he one day do you know the Bible says he repented God that he made man in the days of Noah? His creation that he made in his image, it repented him that he made man. It repented God that he made you wicked people. Yet, in his mercy, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die the death that you and I deserve because of the rebellion, because of the sin, because of the drunkenness, the idolatry, the death that you and I deserve after we've rejected him time and time and time again. He sent his son, Jesus Christ to die the death of a sinner, to die the death of an unrighteous man, because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. You want to pay for your sin? It's going to be hell for eternity. Or you can look to Jesus Christ, who came and lived a perfect life. The Bible says that he was tempted in every way, but did not sin. Why? Not so that he could be a good teacher, but because the sacrifice for your sin needed to be perfect. Just like the animal sacrifices in the Old Testament needed to be perfect. Be without blemish. You tried going to God, the high priest going to God with a with a bull, with a three-legged bull, and you see what God thinks of that. God, you know what? I bet you if the high priest brought that in to offer, I bet you God would kill that. Kill him. You know they had to used to have to wear basically bells on the bottoms of their robes, the high priest, when they went into the holies of holies in a rope, in case, just in case God killed them because they weren't worthy, and they had to drag them out. Are you worthy? Are you worthy of God's love today? Your rebellion? Your hatred? Your drunkenness? Your homosexuality? Your fornication? Are you worthy of God's love? Are you worthy of God's love? My parents are married. You want to know something? The answer is no. But in the mercy of God, He still sent Jesus Christ, His Son, to die on the cross. And you want to know one of the most, most amazing scriptures to me? Is that it says that it pleased the Father to crush His Son. You want to talk about the love of God? You want to talk about the mercy of God? It pleased the Father to crush His Son. Why? Why did it please the Father to crush His Son? Because He knew He was the only way. The Bible says that, that Jesus is able to present you with exceeding joy before the Father. What's the joy of, what's the joy of Jesus Christ presenting a perfect bride before the Father? Presenting that one, it was, it was just a file. It was just a, a whore, a stripper, a baby killer. And they gave their life to Jesus Christ. And, and you know what God does? He changes you. He regenerates your heart. He takes your heart of stone, sir. You've got a heart of stone. You're unable to hear the things of God. And he gives you a heart of flesh that can hear and heed the things of God. You can understand the things of Jesus Christ. He gives his spirit, he puts his spirit in you to be able to discern God's word. As it was in the days of Noah. As it was in the days of Noah. Look around. Wickedness, homosexuality, child murder, baby murder, killing your baby, homosexuality. Homosexuality, rebellion, witchcraft, hatred. As it was in the days of Noah, you just go on with your lives. You let your neighbors murder. Look at these pictures. Look at those pictures. Look what they're doing down the street. Your neighbor. That's a baby. 
That's what they're doing down there. Street. You're eating, you're drinking, you're getting in marriage, you're being, you don't care. You don't care about the wickedness. It's right on your doorstep. It's right on your doorstep. You, you, you ignore it. You ignore it so that you can go on in your sinful lifestyle of drunkenness or homosexuality. It's rebellion. Why is homosexuality wrong? Because God says it's wrong. Well, we've all sinned. The Bible says all sin falls short of the glory of God. So what's God going to say to you, sir? Don't you want to know? He's either going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant, and turn to your rest with the joy of the Lord. Or he's going to say, depart from me, you work lawlessness. Devil acting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. You know what? God doesn't want you to go to hell. God, God created hell for the devil and his angels. Because they're rebellious. They're rebellious. For God will pass you there. There will be weeping and wailing. The Bible says the smoke of the torment arises forever. And there's no rest in day or night. Have you, have you ever had a night? Who raised your hand? Have you ever had a night where you had trouble sleeping? Anyone ever had that? Like you couldn't fall asleep? Can you imagine how hard those? I've had I've had that a couple times. I couldn't fall asleep, and it's the worst thing. Can you imagine being in outer blackness of darkness, on fire, in agony, in torment, no rest, no rest, forever. Forget about if you're 40 years old. It seems like it was so long ago that you were a little kid. That's nothing. It's a vapor. Life's a vapor, the Bible says. Here's the day, gone tomorrow. And what will it profit you to gain the entire world? What will it profit you if, you if you have more money than anybody you ever had on the face of this earth and you die and you lose your soul and you end up in hell? What profit is that going to be to you? The Bible says to store up for yourself treasures in heaven. Where, where moth and rust cannot destroy and thieves cannot break it and steal. But people want to store up for themselves treasures on this earth. They want to buy the BMWs and the Mercedes and the Corvettes and the big houses. They store up for themselves treasures. And they go out and they build more storehouses so they can build up. They can have bigger garages. They want a bigger garage, a bigger house, so they can have more stuff. And God says to them, no fool, your soul will be required of you this night. What are you going to do when God says that to you? You just, you just got your brain new BMW, it's in the driveway, it's, it's, black, it's black, it's beautiful, it's wax, it's polished, it's shining, and God comes to you and says, you fool, your soul will be required of you this very night, Amen. and you stand before God and you're judged, and you're judged, because you're judged by God. The fools make a mock of sin. Fools make a mock of sin. The fool says in the heart, there is no God. How many of you say there is no God? How many of you think God is a fairy tale? You come to Comic Con, Comic Book, you know, sci fi world. Your world's a fairy tale. There's no truth here. This is the illusion. The truth is that Jesus Christ came to die and save sinners. That's the truth. The truth is that you sinned, you rebelled against God, you've broken his law, you've broken his commandments, and without the blood of Jesus Christ, you're done. You have no hope. You're an alien to the commonwealth of Israel, the Bible says, strangers of the covenant of promise. You're without God, without hope. Without Jesus Christ, there's no hope for you, young lady. None. Yes, you. There's no hope for you without Jesus. You're precious in God's eyes. He wants you saved. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be in fellowship with him, with Jesus. But there's no hope in this lifestyle of sin and rebellion. There's no hope. There's no hope without Jesus. There's no hope without Jesus today. Understand that. One day Jesus will talk to you. Jesus Christ, listen, listen, to, this, listen to this scripture. This is what Jesus Christ says. He says, but these are my enemies. Who, who here knows that Jesus Christ has enemies? Everybody thinks that everybody's a friend of God. Jesus Christ, you can believe the Bible or not, but this is what the Bible says. Hey, baby, in the Gospel of Luke. It says, but these mine enemies, which is saying that God has enemies, Jesus Christ has enemies, but these mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. You think you're so tough, so, so, so strong, Flipping off the preachers, I want to really care about you. And one day you're going to stand before a holy 
God and Jesus Christ is going to slay you and you're going to be and you're going to be slain before Jesus Christ because you're his enemy. You're enemy of God because you do not want Jesus Christ to reign over you. You pound your fist. You say you're a minister. You say you're a church goer. And you look at the commandments of God and you pound your fist. You say, that's old school stuff. That's, that's cultural. I'm going to let women pastor my church. That whole women not teaching at church, the whole women not having authority over a man, that's old stuff. And you pound your fist and you say, I'm not going to let God have have dominion. I'm not going to let God rule over me. You wives, you read in the Bible, be submissive to your husband, be in subjection to your husband as unto the Lord. And you say, that's old stuff. That's, that's, that's cultural. And you pound your fist and say, I'm not going to let God reign over me. You can't separate Jesus from his word. You can't do it. You can't separate the two. Think about this. Why do most of you hate us right now? Because of the words we're speaking. If we just stood here and saying that, you wouldn't care. Yet the word that Jesus is speaking, you can't separate Jesus from his word. And his word, his word is, is extremely descriptive about what he's going to do to the wicked and the rebellion. And those that hate him because they don't obey him. They don't follow him. Choose this day whom you will serve. If you're, if you're out here in this event, and I'm gonna, I'll give you one warning that this is a worldly, wicked, ungodly event. If you're not out here to win others to Christ, there's no reason for you to be out here. That's right. This is perversion. Amen. It's fantasy, it's wickedness, it's vileness. Come out from amongst them and be separate. You know, Jesus, Jesus is purifying himself of peculiar people, not because you wear snow hats in the summertime or trench coats in the summertime. That's not the type of peculiar that God is talking about. Peculiar as in the world is drunk as we're not. Peculiar is in, in the world curses, Christians don't. Peculiar is in the world, in the, in the world, the world does this, but Christians, we don't do those things. Because we're peculiar people. There's two genders. Male and female. God created them. You know why there's two genders? There's two genders because God created them in his image, and his image created he them. Male and female. Male and female. Very clear. He said for this reason a man will leave his parents and, and, and join up to his wife, and the, the twain, the two, shall become one flesh. This is another word people just want to rebel against God. And then you're going to wonder when you're at the feet of Jesus and you cut the pieces and rip the parts. Why? Why is this happening? Because you rebel against God. You don't want to obey Him. You don't want Him to be Lord of your life. You know what? I heard people talk about Lordship salvation. If Jesus is not your Lord, He's not your Savior. That's right. Amen. Right Amen. If Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life, Ain't He is not your Savior. Right. Okay, he is your judge, jury, and executioner on day when you stand before Him. If you love me, Jesus said, you'll obey me. He says that he, he knows me but does not obey me is a liar. He's a liar. There's no truth in me. There's no truth in you if you say you love Jesus and you know Jesus but you don't obey me. I know people hate to turn talk about obedience. They don't like the word obey. Well, guess what God says? To obey is better than sacrifice. You want to go and bring your offerings to church, you want to sacrifice Sunday morning. Sacrifice a little bit Sunday morning, sacrifice Wednesday evening, give your maybe even the time. But God says that obedience is better than sacrifice. He wants your obedience. He wants your life. He wants you to obey your instructions. Not just sacrifice, make sacrifices to him of your time and your money. The time has come. Today is the day of salvation, people. Do not harden your hearts. The Bible says if today you hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your heart is in the rebellion and provocation. Where your fathers did, they're the forefathers of children who provoke God to anger. And you guys know, you've heard about Jesus. This is America. You've heard about Jesus. You've heard the Bible. How, how kindly do you think God's going to take the continued rebellion, hardening your heart? What do you think God thinks of that? You know, when, when God says no homosexuals are going to inherit the kingdom of God, you say, I don't care about what God says. I'm going to, I'm going to hold hands with my girlfriend. I'm going, to, I'm going to be a lesbian. I'm going to be a homosexual. What do you think the wrath, you don't understand the wrath of God is kindling, but it's kindling. God, you know, when God saw the children of Israel worshiping other gods, he said to Moses, he said, leave me alone so my wrath can be kindled. 
He, he wasn't like, Moses, help me out, calm me down. He said, you know, I want my wrath to be kindled and the flames of my wrath to be hotter against these wicked people. And what is God going to do to you on that day after you've rejected him for 40, 50, 60 years? What's he going to do to you? Is he going to say, oh, I love you just the way you are? And you're gonna, what are you going to say to Jesus? Oh, uh, my pastor told me I was okay. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it's a dude. Probably disgusting, but it doesn't surprise me. This is the generation we live in. It doesn't Rebellion. work. It doesn't work. Whisperers. Female, female. It doesn't work. Haters of God. Disobedient to parents. Disobedient to parents. What, are you going to judge God now, young man? You're going to judge God that you might be justified? Did your right hand save you? You have an arm like God? Your voice thunder with it like this? You're going to judge God's word now? Come on. You're going to judge the Bible now? You know, turn around and start judging God? You tell us not to judge, you're going to judge God's word? It's the Bible that's going to judge you, young man. Who do you serve? Watch your mouth. Who do you serve? Who do you serve? You're going to be judged by the Bible too, sir. Your gluttonous ways, your lazy ways, your slothful ways, lazy service. Who do you serve, young man? Who do you serve? I serve fucking Shrek. What do you serve? Do you have a serious, do you have a serious anything about you, sir? Any, any serious young men out here? You serve yourself. Well, there at least we have an honest answer. And what good, what good is that going to do you in the end? What is that going to profit you serving yourself? What, what's going to happen when you die, really, young man? And then what? What if, what if you're wrong? I don't care. I'm not wrong. Why do you know you're not Why are you confident in your belief? See, I have a book that's been established, okay, that's never been proven wrong, that's pure, purified like, like silver, burned from here seven times. And your question is, if you're basing your belief just on your own emotions, was Hitler right? Was Hitler right for killing Jews? Hitler thought he was right. Was it okay? Is, is, is that it is? You know, whatever floats your boat, all roads lead to Rome. Is that your is that your religion? Is that your religion, young man? That whatever you think is right, as long as you as you like, you know, eat, drink, and be merry. But what's your religion? You're following a life. You're following a belief system. That's what you said. That's what you believe. It falls short. It's vain. It's vain. It's empty. It's empty. What if you're wrong, young man? How old are you? How old are you? Do you think you've got everything figured out? Hey, no, I took you think you got everything figured out? How young are you? You reject Jesus Christ, you reject his word. The very book that's going to judge you. How gracious God is to give us the book. It's like the teacher giving you the answers before the test. How gracious is God? Not only not only to give us his, his, his word, he tells us exactly how the devil is going to attack. He tells us exactly how it's going to happen. He tells us exactly how people are going to be deceived. And here we are. Look. The blind leading the blind. Both fall into the ditch. God told us. Step for step, how this is going to go down. And it's still one that little. You people, you're not warned. Your pastor has not warned your parents. It's your parents. None of us. You people don't go through. Your parents. Your grandparents are warned. I bet your grandparents are warned. But it's slowly. Your parents, they weren't taught about hell. They weren't taught about the wrath of God. They were told that Jesus loved them. The, 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 the great love movement of the 60s. Now this is what we have, a rebellious generation. Lawlessness abounds. Iniquity abounds. The love of many wax poles. Gay rights? What are gay rights? Gay, gays have more rights. I'm a white heterosexual male in America. I have less rights than anybody on this street right now. We're talking to me about rights. You, you, could have, you could be a slave like the children of Israel were. And you could be trusting in God. And then you can go back to your wicked ways and be destroyed by God. He can send fiery serpents to you and bug you and kill you. Yeah. You don't care. Somebody cares. I know. You know what? I was wondering why you came in tonight. I noticed someone needed to hear. I want you to come and pray. God, and the Bible says this. It says, how can they call upon him when they have not believe? How can they believe upon him when they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? You will not get saved unless you hear the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The power of God and salvation. Everyone that believes it. Everybody. 
to the Jew first and then to the Greek. He came onto his own, but his own received him not. The Jews didn't receive Jesus. They reject Jesus like you rejected Jesus. But to as many as received him, to them he has given the right to be called sons of God. Would you rather be a son of God or a son of the devil? Right. I want to, I want to like it. What do you think that? You sin. Being gay is a sin. Being homosexual is a sin. The Bible says that he was sins is of the devil. First Corinthians chapter 6. In Revelation 2. You said it. Man, I, I, you can look it up. Well, listen, that's not going to save you. Well, how is your Catholic faith going to save you? How is it going to save you? It won't. You need Jesus. Catholic worship idols. You know, you, you, you go to Catholic church? Yes. Okay. You know all those, those graven images, statues? God says this. He, he said this. He says, He says, Thou shalt not make any graven images, and thou shalt not bow down to them or serve them. The Catholics have graven images all over the place. They bow down, they, they bow down. You know, you should be Catholic. You shouldn't even bow down to crosses. Don't bow down to the statue of Jesus Christ. These are graven images. And homosexuality is redundant in God. It's disobedience to God. It's not, it's not me saying this, it's in the Bible. And, and, and you're not going to know this unless somebody tells you. And I'm not, I'm not this hateful person. Everybody wants to think you're hateful people. I don't hate you, man. I don't want you to die. I don't want you to be destroyed. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. But the Bible says that you need to be saved. I, I, no, I said I'm not hateful. Okay, I'm not hateful. I'm, I'm speaking as in love for you. Concern. You believe in God? Well, you do well. Even the demons believe and they tremble. So it says in pain. Is it enough to just believe in God? Yes, it does. The Bible says you sin is not the devil. Homosexuality is a sin. Do you, you agree that homosexuality is a sin? Well, why do you say that? I gave you scriptural, but I gave you scriptural evidence. It's not your choice. Scriptural, scriptural evidence. It's not your choice. 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 Do you know this is the, the book, the Bible is looking to judge you, and, and God is giving it to us. I care for your soul, young man. Repent of your sin. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Repent of your sin. From a sexuality, but you said you were. I'm, just, I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm not judging my right I think you said you're homosexual. Or you said something about that. You need to turn from it. Turn from it. Deny it. If you've got this desire, if you have this desire, then turn from it. Turn from that desire. Don't be a mocker. Don't be a mocker, sir. You mock, you mock, your bonds are strengthened and then mock. What's it going to take? Your wife's got to die in a car wreck? What's it going to take for you to humble yourself, sir? What's it going to take? Children going to die? What's it going to take before you humble yourself in the mighty hand of God? Maybe it'll never happen. Maybe this, maybe this is your one chance, sir. This might be your one chance. This might be your one chance to turn and give your life to Jesus Christ. And you might just be walking away. Right now, this is it for you. This is it for you. Give your life to Jesus Christ tonight. 